Louise Good. Thank you very much for coming on to Talk Beliefs. And we're going to talk about mainly the big protest at the Excel Convention Center in London. And this is a protest against the Jehovah's Witness Convention there. So first of all, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? I'm assuming you must be an ex-Jehovah's Witness. Yes, I am. So I was born in and, and I was a, a slow starter. I didn't leave until I was 30. So I was born in, married in, pioneered, did the, believed it all. Um, and when I had a baby, my first baby, I suddenly thought, I, I don't want to put her through this. But I still thought it was the truth. So I knew that Jehovah would destroy me. And I kind of self-sabotaged my life to get out of the religion. I didn't know that's what was happening. But I like lost my marriage and my job and my house within about three weeks. <laughs> and, in, and in that mess, I, I stopped going to meetings. So I had a little baby. Um and then about five years after that, I dared to research. And then I suddenly started waking up, suddenly realized actually Jehovah's not going to destroy me. It's all a load of nonsense. Um, and I just binge researched. And because that then, then it was the internet. So I was able to watch videos and read articles. And I spent about a year binge researching. And then I became slowly became an activist myself. And then those days, I suppose, is before JW.org, which is the official JW, Jehovah's Witness website, yes. they probably thought, oh, this internet thing is terrible. Do not go on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't, don't go there. Don't go there. So I didn't, I was really obedient. But when I left, my dad who'd left before me gave me a copy of Crisis of Conscience, which I didn't read obviously. Um, but later on when I read it, that was the awakening. I suddenly realized, my God, every single thing about this, I would have called it a religion back then, but now I know it's a cult. Every single thing about this cult is wrong. And that book was the gateway to me. So you go through a process. You start off by going, well, I, I still believe in Jehovah, but not their version of Jehovah. And then you go like, well, I still believe in God, but not Jehovah. And then you go, well, I don't know if I believe in God. And people stop at different points along that journey. I went the full nine yards and went, I don't believe in anything. It's all nonsense. You just so dropped I, it like a hot potato. You didn't go into like crystal healing or anything. As no, I from. just like, oh, deed. I just thought, oh, I've had a gut full. I've had this shoved down my neck for 30 years. I've had a gut full. I'm like really averse to anything. Yeah. Any, I mean, not just religion, but any kind of, uh, dogma or uh, like I couldn't join a, a political party or anything because I just thought I can't do this <laughs> gotta be your own person yeah even though I didn't know what that was <laughs> so um tell us a bit about this protest there have been protests before but mm. this could possibly all going well be one of the biggest ones that the UK has ever seen oh god all oh, going well <laughs> they're, they're magic words aren't they so what happened was we had this um Warwick protest um in America and one of my friends who was a co-host with me on my podcast JW community podcast he went over there now he lives in Ireland and when he came back he said to me Louise we've got to do a protest in England this is brilliant it was absolutely fantastic it was lovely and there was about 35 40 people turned up and he said the thing is we've got to do the biggest protest ever so if we top 40 people we've done it and I just went, oh, God, Neil, no, no, it's so not my thing. No, no, no. And then I thought about it for five minutes and I thought, yeah, if I don't do it, somebody else will. Yeah. <laughs> and I sort of arrogantly thought I'm quite good at organizing things. I don't I don't really have a dog in this fight. I haven't been abused. I have, nothing terrible has happened to me as a witness I don't know why I'm an activist, actually, but I, I, I've not got a particular thing that I'm angry about. So I thought, OK, I've got to do it because I think I can do it well. So I kind of, it's not my natural arena. Um, I'm, I feel really out of my comfort zone, but I wanted it planned well. Right. So this uh, protest, we don't know exactly how many people are coming to this, but I'm sure that there are some do's and don'ts that you would suggest that people who are planning to go to Excel on this uh, this weekend and the weekend after uh, would actually like to adhere to. Would you like to talk about that? Yes. So I am in no way uh, want to be seen as someone who controls people's behavior. I'm not a policeman of other people's behavior. But what I would suggest is that um, there are there are a lot of people that have invested a lot of time and money into this. Some people have spent hundreds of pounds. 
a one person that I know has spent in excess of a thousand pounds to come to this protest. So we've got people coming from Australia, America, Canada, New Zealand, um, Norway, Finland, Greece, Ireland, Scotland, Wales. All of those people have invested. So if if the behavior of one person jeopardizes the protest such yeah. that the police felt that they needed to close it down and they are legally able to do that under certain powers, then that would really jeopardize the investment of the group. So I'm not saying do this or do that, but what I'm saying is please be aware that your behavior can 100% affect the investment of the group um, and the group have invested a lot. So I'm not attempting to control people's behavior, but I really do want people to be respectful, polite. Um, I know people will have an emotional reaction. I, I totally get that. There are people coming with the most horrific personal stories and they will be going on a development journey throughout the, the protest weekend. And it may throw up all sorts of upsetting things, um, but I've got, a care, I've, um, I've got a care team that I've identified. There are five of us. We're going to wear little red heart badges. I've got two um, student psychiatric nurses. I've got a trained Samaritan, a first aider, and a psychotherapeutic counsellor. So there is a team of people there to support people. Um, but the bottom line is, I just need people to be respectful and polite. I don't want people turning up going, I know my rights. You can't tell me what to do. Because actually, part of the protest is on private land and if there are security present with um an sia badge then they can tell us what to do <laughs> in the same way that i can tell somebody what to do in my own back garden because i own the back garden and i don't need to be reasonable and i don't need to have a reason i can just say i'm sorry you can't protest in my back garden because i've bought the back garden so we just need people to be cognizant that we need to be respectful and polite and we don't need to have a bit of a you know i get i get jehovah's witnesses have been controlled all the life i i've been there 30 years i've done it and you leave with a kind of i've been told what to do all my life you can't tell me what to do now but you know rights are balanced with responsibilities so my right to protest is balanced against other people's rights for whatever their rights are. There, there are no absolute rights. Even if there is just a one person who does sort of spoil it for everyone, you just know that the JWs will take that back to their kingdom halls. And go angry apostates. And of course, the whole congregation will say, well, they were all like this one person. I know, I know. And I can't control, you know, we don't know how many people are turning up, but we're hoping in excess of 100 on the, on the Saturday the 11th. And I'm pretty sure that we will have that many. And again, I, I've got no interest at all in controlling people's behavior. Everybody are adults. I want them to control their own behavior. And I want the group to be supportive of anyone that feels themselves getting upset or distressed or agitated because that's natural part of cult damage. If one of the protesters or any of them want to actually address the conventioners as they come in and out, and I know there's, there's a lunch break mm -hmm. and then they'll yes. leave about half five, something like that, on yeah. each of these four days, what would you suggest uh, the dialogue would be? Obviously, it wouldn't be shouting, it wouldn't be throwing tomatoes, no. it would be... <laughs> Constructive dialogue or no, potatoes are banned. I've completely banned all potatoes and tomatoes. <laughs> but the dialogue, I mean, you know, I used to be a Jehovah's Witness. I was that person walking to the convention in my nice modest skirt and my buttoned up blouse and my you know, I was still me. I'm just on the other side of the fence. So I would say try and remember who you were when you were in and what gentle treatment you needed when you were a witness because what we're protesting is not against the jehovah's witnesses who are essentially victims we're protesting against the policies and procedures of the organization i get that we might be angry at individuals because people have been treated badly by particular elders but we can't take that out on you know you can't go into tesco's and get angry at the girl on the till because the pricing system's wrong she's got no control over that and it's childish and selfish to do that and, and vent your own feelings on somebody that's got no control and is in the, themselves a victim. So I'd say try and remember that they are essentially nice, 
brainwashed, maybe slightly dim people who will follow the rules and will spout all the frustrating tripe that they spout. But that they're not who we're protesting. They're just the victims. They're just the, the cannon fodder of Watchtower. We're protesting the policies and procedures of the Watchtower. Just imagine you want to go to this pro protest and you arrive in London and perhaps you aren't even familiar with London. How would you direct them in terms of uh, where to go, what trains to get, that kind of thing? Oh, God, that's a good question. So it's the XL Arena. It's well uh, supported by trains, but I'm not a london -y person, so I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but I've got... Um, it's near Docklands, isn't it? So that's way, way it's over. Docklands. Yeah, it is. It's London South Docklands. Uh, yeah, and it's by the um, London, it's by the airport as well. But if you, I mean, you can go on to, there's a Trains for London website that has the whole tube system on there. And you can, there's a journey planner. So you can put in where you are, where you want to get to, which is Excel Arena. What I've seen is the Jubilee Line and the DLR, which is the Docklands Light Railway, are the two oh. ones which you should. Oh, thank you. You've answered the question yeah everything can be googled because it's quite it's so easy once you're in london and you're on the you're on the tube system and so it'd just be a matter when you get there to look for i mean how do we find you you said you're going to be wearing badges look for me darling <laughs> i'm unmistakable um so what i've asked is I've got a um, a JW protest page on Facebook, and I've and I'm also advertising in the other XJW groups and on my own personal page, which is Louise Good. And I've asked that people. So the main protest times are twelve until two, because that's when they'll all be coming out for lunch. You're dead right, and then half four until half five, which is when they'll all be going home. Um, so those are the protest times. At 10 to 12, I want to do a briefing with everybody that's turned up and I shall probably stand on a picnic bench <laughs> and wow. just spend five minutes and talking. This, this coming out. weekend, which is uh, Saturday, uh, Saturday, Sunday, August, is it 11 and 12? Right yes. And yeah. then the following weekend at the exact same place. Place, yeah. So it's the Western Terrace outside the Excel Arena. So we're not going inside. It's a kind. It's a weird kind of a place. It's like got there's like a public right of way down the middle, which is covered, and they've got little concession stands like Costa Coffees and things. So the general public can walk up and down the middle, and then to the left and right, they've got these big spaces that are like. Um, aircraft hangers kind of and you mm. rent as many as you need and they have big dividers so if you need three they just uh, fold the dividers back and you have a bigger space and if you need one they put the dividers back in and so you rent and that's on the left and the right so when I went two years ago they had I don't know four hangers on the left and t and one on the right for the Polish convention so it'll be something like that so we're not going in to the convention space because um, what's the point um we'll be outside where everybody has to walk past us a few in infiltrators who might have some secret footage which we'll find on youtube eventually yes so if people want to go in discreetly and not make a scene i've got no issue with that but if you're going to go in and do a kind of a you're all mentalists in a cult you're going to get shown out quite quickly and you'll have limited time to do that um, and it won't have any effect on them because you will just come across as a mad person. I mean, we'll come across as mad anyway. They will, they, you know, they're conditioned to, but I suppose the less mad you can come across, maybe the better. I don't know. I don't know. All worldly people are mad, right? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so as long as we don't block any of the walkways, as long as we stood well back, we can stand underneath that walkway. But I think the main thing is not to block anybody's way because then the police could deem that as aggravated trespass, which is criminal. So <clears throat> on the Friday, we've got BBC Hereford and Worcester are covering this on the radio. I realise that's regional radio, but she's put it out to tender to other regions. So they're going to cover it. We've got a documentary maker turning up on the Saturday who's going to have chairs set up. So people that want to go and tell their stories, he will be filming that as well as the protest. We've got I and another activist from Australia are being interviewed at the other side of town from two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday at the London Black Atheists um, Free Minds uh, Conference. 
um, and they have got AC Grayling and Andrew Copson on the on the um, interview. Yes, panel that's as well. what I was reading about that. I would like to, I would like to be there, but it's uh, it's almost clashes in a way, doesn't it? It kind of does, but you know, it was just too much of a good opportunity to miss. So yes. I'll get the the two of us, two of us from the protest will go and be interviewed there. And then also in the middle of the night last night, I woke up at two o'clock in the morning. I've got an email from the um, production company, um, Frank and Lively, who produced the film Apostasy, which is about Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, they're, I saw it last week. they're putting a special screening on for us in between the two protest weekends where they're going to um, provide the director, Daniel, to do a, an extra Q&A. So although I know people are coming just for the weekend and probably going home, there will be people in London that are around that can attend that on the two. I think that's going to be Tuesday evening, um, but I'm going to advertise that as soon as I've got confirmation. So I just thought that was nice that they were happy to work with us and support us and provide Daniel for an evening. That's excellent. I met Daniel very briefly at the apostasy screening and uh, a lot of people who I know from from YouTube, a lot of activists um, that was in really? London a couple of weeks ago. And um, yeah. I, I did ask Daniel for an interview. He said he couldn't do one right then. He was almost, he was so busy. Um, but I think it is on the cards. Good, so, good. Be great. <laughs> that, yeah. that film is, you you got to see that film if you haven't seen it. It's like, oh, you got to see it if you if you at all want to know what it's like being in a cult. It's so accurate. I made my partner watch it, and I'm going to make my sister watch it, and I'm going to make my daughter watch it. It's just, it's like a really dull, normal, exactly like it was for thirty years film. Oh, that would drive me insane. I mean, like <laughs> I say, I'm not an XJW myself, and I thought in all the years doing this that I'd figured out what it was like, you know, more or less to be one, but it, it really does bring home the sort of like the drudgery and the yeah. grimness. and there's, there's no, it's supposed mm -hmm. they see it as hopeful, but it's anything but hopeful. You feel sort of hopeless and on a treadmill and yeah, that's exactly what my life felt like, just utterly pointless. So you've been told, oh, you know, this is really important. We're saving people's lives. We're the happiest people in the world. And then you, your gut is saying to you, oh, I'm really unhappy and my yeah. life is pointless. And, you know, you're not allowed to think that. Don't listen to your gut. That's not true. And, like, that's why witnesses get ill, because that dissonance between what you're told to believe and what you physical gut tells you to believe is so wildly different that you get physically ill trying to hold it together yeah, and we're told well the new world is coming but you think yeah. hang on if armageddon happens which is you know the end of the world who is to yeah. pick up all the rubble and the dead bodies is that me yeah, i know i know <laughs> it's it's right right parallel life, I'm not looking forward to this at all <laughs> <laughs> uh, well at least you can laugh about it now um yeah, i'm sure it's not always the case you know uh, <laughs> But, but thanks so much for what you do because it's it's very, very important. And uh, yeah, I'm sure you've helped a lot of people transition. Maybe three people. But thank you so much for um, shadowing this and helping me get a bit more publicity. I massively appreciate it. Oh, no problem. No problem whatsoever. And uh, hopefully I'll get a lot of interesting footage on the day and I'll put that on my channel uh, as ASAP. Thank and, you. Um, yeah, great. So we'll catch up with you hopefully soon. Soon. Brilliant. Thank you very much.